The next skill we're going to talk about is childbirth and the vertex delivery, but first we're going to show you the equipment that's involved with uh, childbirth. In your kit, in the animals, you have a, uh, a cardboard disposable kit, which comes with a number of supplies. The supplies are normal 4x4 gauze, used for whatever you might need. You have a belt syringe, which when you depress, you apply the pressure, and remembering that when you suction the baby, you always suction the mouth first, then the nostrils, according to the ATGs, mouth first, and then the nostrils. There's a scalpel to use to cut the umbilical cord, and in some kits you might have a uh, pair of elliptical scissors, which are a little bit safer. You then have your cord clamps. When once attached to the cord, will snap on and are usually non-removable. So by applying it on the cord and pushing down, you snap it on the cord, that'll stop the blood flow. Uh, they're applied seven inches from the baby and further 10 inches away, so seven and 10. Then we go to clamp the cord once the baby is born, seven, and then further 10, three inches away for a total of 10 inches. So those are the two umbilical clamps. Also in your kit, and in the ambulance, you'll have some blue pads, which are cloth on one side and waterproof on the other. Uh, the idea behind placing these pads is to put numerous pads, four or five pads, under the buttocks of the mom who's delivering, and that way you can actually uh, um, keep the area clean and or as clean as it can be by using multiple pads. Also inside your kit will be paper leggings, if you like, they're paper blankets. Uh, in the ambulance, you have access to regular blankets, which can be used to drape the mom, which we'll demonstrate in a minute, and also you can use towels uh, for for baby for drying off and stimulating your baby making sure they're, uh, they're warm. The last thing we're going to be needing is a pediatric or depending on the size of baby, a knee needle uh, resuscitated bag or BBM with the applicable auction hose and proper size mass. So you need multiple mass uh, to, ask, to make sure you have the proper size for the baby when it's delivered. So once we realize childbirth is, uh, or delivery is imminent and that's characterized by crowning or bulging of the perineum, which is this area, the perineum has actually been removed now so we can facilitate the, uh, the skill to demonstrate. Uh, we would drape mom and get her ready for delivery. So putting her on a flat surface, on the stretcher, on a bed. Ideally, if she's moved to the ambulance, you have all your equipment there and you can do the delivery in the ambulance. But if not, uh, deal with what you have at hand and that could be the edge of a bed or a couch or whatever. The first thing after you've removed all undergarments, make sure that you cover mom uh, to give her a modicum of respect and decency. Don't strip all her clothes off, put a blanket over top of her. And the next thing you're going to do is take a number of blue pads, and I've got two to demonstrate, and place them under her hips in order to catch uh, amniotic fluid and whatever else might come out and to keep the area clean. We can then use the paper towels for demonstration and I'll use towels for demonstration to drape one across mom's leg. So we've got one over the area there. We've got a second blanket or towel over the other area, other leg. We then have a third towel on top of mom's hips and, and uh, abdominal area. And then what you'd like to do is take the receiving blanket or warm blanket uh, on top of that. So baby is, uh, when, when the baby's warm, we can actually have a warm blanket to, uh, to uh, clean them off and, or clean them off and dry them. So our equipment's ready, and then we will go through delivery of the baby. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate a normal vertex delivery now. So once mom has been prepped, I've taken the blankets off for clarity of the skill. And what we're going to do is put our hands against the perineum to prevent an explosive delivery. And that's characterized by the baby's head coming out rapidly and then an expansion of the, uh, the skull and the underlying arteries and veins which can rupture. So we want to prevent that from happening. So in a controlled way, as mom's pushing, we're going to place our hands against the perineum and slowly, as she contracts, the head's going to deliver. As soon as the head delivers, there'll be a gush of fluid. The head will spontaneously turn to the left or the right, depending on which way the shoulders are coming through. Next step is I want you to feel for a nuchal cord to see if there's a cord around the neck. And if you have time, the arm stops, you can ask her to stop pushing if she is so inclined. And we're going to suction the mouth first by depressing the bulb, inserting it, and then the nostrils. If you have time. And as baby delivers, I'm going to put my right hand against the neck. And as baby comes out, I'm going to slide my left hand down the backbone to the feet and hook the ankles. And now it's just a matter of turning the baby onto my forearm 
and then bringing the baby in towards me now. So we want to make sure that the baby is in line with the mother's hips. We want the baby in a head down, head down dependent position. And at this point, we can then, again, suction if required, depress the ball syringe, mouth, nose. And from there, we can actually take the baby up onto the receiving blanket and start to vigorously dry off the, the baby uh, to stimulate them. Noting that we would take an APGAR at one minute and five minute interval. Once baby has been delivered, obviously the cord will still be attached to the placenta inside. We can then use the receiving blanket, as we mentioned, and dry off the baby and vigorously stimulate the baby, ensuring we get all the vernix caseosum off and all the moisture. And so once baby's dry, we take off the wet blanket and then place baby in a dry blanket if everything is okay. I'm not one for wrapping babies. And then what we're gonna do is hand the baby to mom. So mom, we can encourage breastfeeding and uh, she can bond with her baby. At some point, within the next one minute to five minutes, she's going to have more contractions and she's gonna deliver the placenta. Prior to that happening, what we'd like to do is detach the baby and put a cord at seven inches, a clamp, sorry, on the cord, seven inches from the baby. And then a further three inches for a total of 10, snap these down and then cut the cord in between. Ensure if you're using a scalpel that you cut upwards away from the mum and away from baby. If, if, if it can all be avoided. Never ever cut towards the, the mum or the baby. If you have scissors, it's just a matter of putting the elliptical scissors around and cutting the cord. Baby's now detached from mum and on her own as far as spontaneously breathing. At this point, <clears throat> mum has a number of contractions and the placenta will be delivered. It's just a matter of dropping the placenta into the into uh, a garbage bag or a bag that comes in the birthing kit and taking, ensuring you take that to the hospital. There is no reason to uh, inspect at that point as long as you bring it to the hospital. Uh, um, at that point, once the consent has been delivered, you can clean mom up if you have time, place a uh, sanitary napkin on and get her ready for transport to the hospital.